If you would take your Bibles with me this morning, we're going to start in the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 127. This is one of my favorite Psalms. I haven't used it for a while, but it means a great deal to me, and I, I believe it will for you as well. Psalms chapter 127, starting in verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They, may not, they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Let us stop here for just a moment. Verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. You know, that's an amazing statement to open up that psalm right there. Because he tells us the very first thing we have to do. And it's really in anything. In building a marriage, in building a home, in raising children, in anything. You start with the Lord first. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. There's a lot of different things I remember about my childhood. A lot of things I remember growing up seeing. I remember being tight financially. I remember sickness being in our family. I remember all kinds of different things. But the one thing I remember throughout it all, and the good and the bad, I remember my parents praying together. Man, it had such an impact to see mom and dad praying together. Didn't see it at first, but when, man, when I saw it, things all of a sudden changed. It's not that more money came into the house. That didn't really happen. Not till much, much later. It's not that sickness went away. Again, that didn't happen until a lot later on. But the attitude changed in the house. The spirit changed in the house. Man, it was different. When mom and dad started praying together. And that takes us right back to this first verse. Unless the Lord builds the house. You see, what we saw was we saw families come forward today dedicating their children to, their Lord, to the Lord. Their children's lives into the hands of God Almighty. Saying, we're going to teach them the ways of God. You know, teaching isn't one-dimensional. Teaching isn't just, I'm going to tell you what you need to do, now go and do it. That's not teaching. That is not teaching whatsoever. Teaching is showing. We call it practicing what we preach. Let children see it. When I want to tell my kids how to be a godly man, I must first be practicing to be a godly man. When I want my children to pray, I need them to see me praying. When I want my children to know what it means to repent, I want them to see me repenting. I want them to watch. I want God to build this house. In order for God to build this house, i got to let my kids see the work that God is doing. i got to let them see it and put into practice. That made the most impact in my life was watching my parents walk for Jesus Christ. It almost seems as though now in modern day we've got the attitude of I have to hide my walk for God for my children to be holy. That does not work. Life isn't pretty. It's not cleaned up. It's not polished. The kids need to see your walk for Jesus Christ. The good, the bad, and the ugly. They need to see it. Because here's why. Their life will not be perfect either. And they're going to need to see what God does with imperfection. Continue on down the verses here. It says, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. I remember, I, this still happens today. It may happen to parents here today. I wake up in the middle of the night worried about my kids when nothing at all is happening. That ever happened to anybody else? Happens to me. Happens to me. I lay down and all of a sudden I pop up and all these worries start popping up in my head. And I think, what can I do? 
I can't do anything. Yes, I can. According to Scripture, I can pray a hedge about my children. So one day, one day, I went into my bedroom. I have a little, little vial. I used to have. It's not there anymore. But I had a little vial of anointing oil. And I went all around our house. I anointed everything that didn't move. I may have anointed some things that did move. I don't remember. I just went through and I anointed everything until that vial of anointing oil was gone. I wanted God to be present in every area of my home. I wanted His anointing on my children. I wanted His anointing on my wife. I wanted His anointing on our marriage. I wanted His anointing on absolutely everything. And I prayed over everything. Saying, God, You've got to build this house. I can't be with my kids everywhere they go. I can't go with them everywhere they're being sent. Sometimes they go places where I can't. Maybe it's school. Maybe it's a softball game. Maybe it's a basketball game. I'm not there sitting in between them and their friends. And I want God to be. I want Him to be right there in the middle. And I want my kids to know what it means to be a good Christian man and woman. My dad, several years ago, my dad and my mom, they live in an old farm country house. That's where I grew up. There's not a square corner in that house. Absolutely everything is crooked. You put a ball on the floor, it's hard telling which way it's going to roll. And my dad one day, he looked at me, he goes, son, he said, we have a project to do. If you live in an old farmhouse, those are words you never, ever, ever want to hear because it's going to get a lot bigger. It's not going to get smaller. And as his son, we have a project to do. I said, okay, dad. I said, what are we going to do? He says, we are going to tear up this floor. And I said, oh, you bought new flooring at Sam's. He goes, yes, I did. But he said, we're going to take it all up. We're going to take up the subfloor. We're going to take up the trusses. We're going to do this right. I said, yay. So we start tearing into all of it. And we get all the way down. And I looked at my dad. I said, Dad, I said, here's your problem. I, I, I know what the problem is. He said, what is it? I said, there's no support in this floor. There's no support. We've got to put support. And then my dad looks at me. Now bear in mind, this is after we've torn up the floor and the subfloor and the trusses and everything else. And he looks at me and goes, that sounds like a lot of work. I was like, the die's already been cast. We're already neck deep. So we start digging down. And we put concrete down in there. And now we have to let it sit. And when it cures, then we put the bricks and the block on top and we bring it up and we get the floor all set up. And Dad's like, man, this floor is pretty solid. And him and I both, it must have looked ridiculous to anyone driving by because we're both in that living room just jumping up and down. We're like, boy, that's pretty solid. As a Christian, what you find is when you start be building up your relationship with God as a couple, as a husband and a wife, and you start making God more of a priority in your home, you're going to find that the foundation of your home is starting to get pretty solid. You can jump up and down. A lot of things can happen. It doesn't move. And guess who lives on that foundation? Your children. We do it backwards. We say, Lord, I know you got to build the house, so I'm going to teach my children. That means nothing if you and your wife are not building a foundation. You have to build the foundation first. Husbands, you're the head of the house. If your walk for God is weak, it will show in your wife. It will show in your children. You've got to have a firm foundation. Wives, if you're not there supporting your husband in his walk for the Lord, but you're just tearing him down constantly, you're tearing down the foundation of your home and you don't even know it. The Scripture states that the foolish woman tears down her house with her own hands. That's what happens. We have to build a solid foundation. That's why I love this verse. When you go on down, it tells you what your children are going to become in verse 4. It says, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children in one's youth. I want you to notice something. It refers to children as an arrow, but how does it refer to the adults as warriors? You don't become a warrior by somebody stamping your hand and saying you're a warrior now. You become a warrior through training, through effort, 
through skill you become a warrior. And the Scripture states that as you build up that relationship with Jesus Christ, as you get stronger in your faith, your children will become instruments that you use to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Just like arrows are so skilled in the hand of a mighty warrior, so will your children be when you raise and train them up in the way of the Lord and build up your marriage at the same time. Let's go further in Scripture. Let's continue to explore this. If you will, follow me as we go on over. i got to get my notes here. To Ephesians chapter 5. Go ahead and turn there with me. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 starting in verse 25 and going on to verse 28. This is for the husbands. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her that He might sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word that He might present her to Himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. i tell you what, husbands, we have no idea the gift we've been given from God that is our spouse. That is the most precious gift that you could ever imagine. Beyond all reasoning. I just sat down with my wife just last night Man, the Lord speaks through her. There are times I look at her and just think, man, honey, that's... And I'm not, I don't say it jokingly. I just think God must have said that to you. That's absolutely incredible. We were talking last night going over some things and I was really discouraged and upset and she looked at me and she told me, she said, have you ever considered that maybe this is a path to walk instead of a problem to solve? I looked at her, I stood back, I thought, that was my wife. I told her, I said, honey, in all the sermons I've ever preached, I don't think I've ever said anything so profound. I said, that was incredible. And you look at our families, and boy, is that not true? This is a path to walk, not a problem to solve. We're not trying to solve all our kids' problems. We're trying to show them the path to walk. This is how you walk the path. This is how you get through life's journey. Kids, look at me and your mom. We pray when times are tough. We dig in the Word when times are tough. We anoint the house because we know the Spirit of God can do what we cannot. This is a path you walk, not a problem you solve. Kids, this is what you do. These are arrows in the hand of a mighty warrior. This is how you do it. And the Scripture tells us as husbands, says, hey, I've given your wives a lot of wisdom here. He goes, fellas, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Now husbands, sometimes we get pretty smart elecky at times. And we look at God and we want to tell God, say, now Lord, if you met my wife, don't go there, guys. That's not good. Don't go there. Look at the Scripture. As Christ loved the church, what did the church do to Jesus? That cross behind me tells a story. That's what the church did. And Christ loved the church anyway. He says, Husbands, love your wives as I loved the church. You see, we pray for so many things, but we don't always recognize what we pray for. We say, God, I want godly children. I want a peaceful home. I want all these different things. And we don't think about, what does that mean? What do I have to do to get those things? Work on your marriage. Work on your marriage. Step one. Work on your marriage. And don't work, in all, don't work on it by telling your spouse they're always right, because I don't care man or woman, you're not. You're not always right. It's putting God in the middle of your marriage. It's yielding. It's saying, I'm sorry. It's going down on your knees in prayer and seeking the face of God. Humble enough to understand that you might be the one that has to change when you're done praying. 
It's digging in your word saying, God, I want to please you. I'm not looking to please my wife. I'm not looking to please my husband. God, I want to please you. I want my children to live long and healthy lives. And I want to do it, God, by honoring you so that they follow me. That as I follow you, they follow me. Do you realize how many times our kids struggle with the very things we struggle with? If we don't give them a recipe of success by showing them it can be overcome, they're going to knock their heads in every way and more that we've knocked our own. God wants us to have the victory. He wants us to have it. My dad one time, he made me memorize, and you can look here in your Scriptures, he made me memorize Ephesians 6, 1-3. through He told me, he said, you need to memorize this. This will go really well for you, son. You've got to work on this. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. You see why he made me memorize it, don't you? Honor your father and mother, for this is the first commandment, with a promise that it may go well with you, and you may enjoy long life on the earth. My dad's kind of a humorous man. He puffed up and he looked at me and goes, you've got to listen to me. The Bible said you've got to listen to me, son. I was a pretty smart young fella. I loved the Lord, and I really enjoyed learning more about the Bible. And I looked at my dad, and I said, Dad, I will do my best, but did you read verse 4? It says, Fathers, do not provoke your children under wrath, but bring them up in the admonition of the Lord. I memorized that one too. It comes back to the parents, doesn't it? We have to love God before we look to our children and ask them to obey us. Now God will bless them regardless if they're obeying. God promises that. But if you want your children to be healthy in the Lord Jesus Christ and grow up to be good young men and women, it starts with your relationship with God. It starts there church we made a promise this morning and it wasn't a passive promise it was a big one to come along beside these parents and give godly godly advice godly counsel and godly affection that their children may grow up and love the lord we should take that covenant seriously and search the lord always and what we do and say with our children and the kids of this church. Let's look further in Scripture to 1 Peter chapter 4. Go ahead and turn there with me. 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 7. It may take you a moment. It is a small book. But 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 7, it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers. Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold of grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know, I've read those verses many times, and I've always looked at them through the context of the church, but it really does take on a whole different meaning when you look at it in the context of family. When you look at it at family. For one, do all things without grumbling or complaining. Boy, that's a big one. There's a lot of grumbling that goes on in the house at times. Things, we look at each other and say, now I would never say this out in public, but I'm going to tell you. Kids hear that. Kids hear that. We do housework and we complain and grumble the whole time we're doing it because we don't want to do it. Our children hear that. We're aware of our testimony outside the house. We don't think about our testimony so much inside our home. It can hurt. It can hurt. 
I've told several people throughout my life, I said, you know, I grew up a, a minister's son. I'm a fourth generation minister. I'm proud of my family's history. But in that, I've shared with many people, I said, you know, it's, it's scary to think how many ministers' children still attend church when they get older. How many people still have their kids in church when they're in the ministry? Very few. Very, very few. You say, Pastor, why is that? Because Satan hits our families the hardest. He comes at them with the ferocity to tear them apart. If we want God to move, we have to protect our homes. We have to protect our children by protecting our marriages. Be careful what you bring in. Be careful what you watch and listen to. When you pray, pray lovingly for your spouse. Pray lovingly for your children. Surround them with the peace of God. Every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, and I never ask them to do it, but I pray they never stop. Our children join us up here at the altar. I tell you what, there's nothing more wonderful than to wrap your arms around your kids and grab them and have prayer with them. Just to spend time in prayer. You won't always have that. I remember the day I looked at my dad and my mom. Music can come forward. I looked at my dad and my mom and I, I told them, I said, guys, I'm going into the ministry. You know, I'm lucky if I get to spend one Sunday a year with my family in church. And I don't say that to say feel sorry for me. I say that to say how precious that time was that I got to spend with them in church. It was a precious time. It was a time to grow, a time to embrace one another, to be encouraged and loved by each other. We've got that with our children now. You may have it with your children or your grandchildren. Do not take it for granted. Do not throw it away. The Bible tells us, unless the Lord builds the house, you labor in vain. You labor in vain. God's not looking for somebody else to build your home. He's looking for you to come along beside Him and build it. God didn't give your kids to anybody else. He didn't surrender them to the Sunday school teacher or to the pastor. He gave the children to you. They're your kids. And God says, this is my challenge to you. Your spouse, God didn't give your spouse to anybody else. He gave them to you. They're your spouse. If you cannot love your spouse, it will affect your home. If you cannot forgive your spouse, it will affect your home. If you do not pray with your spouse, if you do not read your Bible together, if you don't take time to talk to one another, it will affect your home. And it will affect your children. If you're not taking time to teach your kids the Word of God, you're missing out on one of the greatest blessings this world has. One of the greatest blessings God has given you. The ability to look at a young child and say, this is what Jesus says. This is what Jesus says. Parents, don't be afraid to tell your kids you don't know what the Bible is saying. Grab them by the hand. Saying, you know what? Your mom and I don't quite understand this either. But we'll learn together. We'll grow together. And one day when you're old, one day when your kids are grown, and I say this, to the families that were up here earlier. One day you and I are going to have something in common if we don't already. We're going to sit down one day and our children will be there with their kids. We'll see them doing what we taught them a long, long time ago. 
we'll see them passing on a blessing. And we'll know God built my house. God built my house. What a wonderful blessing that is. Something you do not want to surrender. You do not want to give that up. You may say today, Pastor, it's hard. You have no idea what we've gone through. Oh, the greatest things in this world are hard. The most precious things in this world can be gut-wrenching at times. That's why my wife looked at me just last night said, maybe, just maybe, this is a path you walk. It's not a problem you solve. The path before me has taken a lot of turns. So many turns. But I try hard never to lose sight of the blessing I've been given. Wonderful children. Amazing kids. An incredible spouse. They're my blessing. Everything in this world will come and it will go. They will remain. Your children will remain. Remember the promise God gives you. Man, it's a good one. Train them up in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. The Bible makes me that promise. So I'm going to do everything I can now on this side of heaven to train my children up every chance they give me so that I can lay my head down at night and know and say, God, you promised me. Even though they're walking away right now, God, you promised me. When they're old, they will not walk away from the faith that I taught them. Many of you here today, you have grown kids, you have adult kids that you're praying for. I'm going to tell you this morning, never, ever, ever stop praying for your kids. Never stop bringing them before God. Never stop pleading your case before God the Father. You keep bringing them to Jesus Christ. Sick the hounds of heaven on them. God will bring them in. You may have young kids right now where you're feeling discouraged. I'm going to ask you parents today to do something that I do every single Sunday. That is grab your spouse. If your children are with you, then grab your children and bring them to the altar and pray for them. The family that prays together will be, I promise you, the family that stays together. Pray for each other. Pray for each other. I don't care if the whole world is watching. When it's all done, you will have a stronger marriage and a stronger home than anybody can ever imagine. Let the world watch and see what my God can do. Come to the altar and pray for your spouse and pray with your kids. If you're someone this morning where you just say, Pastor, I have no idea. I have no idea if God could even reach my kids anymore. You pray. That's fear talking. You pray. God will get their attention. He made you as a parent a promise. God will reach them. You bring them in prayer. Whatever needs you have, whatever need you need to pray about, anything God has laid on your heart, I invite you this morning, this altar is open for any need you have. Please come.